UMass has had a history of buying a special volume to commemorate every millionth volume added to our collections. We purchased initially for the one millionth volume a copy of Jonathan Edwards' Careful and Strict Inquiry on Freedom of the Will, which is a landmark publication in the history of religion from this area, uh, going back to the Great Awakening period. And it was purchased specially by funds raised by library staff, which is sort of an important piece. Our two millionth volume was a first edition of Phyllis Wheatley's Poems, which is a really landmark publication in African American uh, literature and uh, women's literature as well. The three millionth volume was another locally oriented publication. We bought a copy of James Baldwin's Gypsy that was produced by the Gehenna Press that included special artist proofs by the uh, great artist Leonard Baskin. And that publication was a, a wonderful addition to our library. It fits into small press publishing. It fits into African American history and literature. And Baldwin, of course, was a faculty member at UMass, so it adds there as well. For the formative volume, we wanted to find something that represented something about our history as an institution, our values, something about who we are and what we think about as librarians. Freedom of the will, freedom of inquiry, uh, equality of access, uh, all those sort of values that we hold central to what we do. And because we're a land-grant institution also, we wanted to have something that represented our reaching out to the public in general. And after some considerable thinking and looking and searching to find something that was special and that really highlighted something about where we are today in 2014, we came up with a copy of the Emancipation Proclamation, a rare separate printing of the Emancipation Proclamation that came out in December 1862, really just before the act itself went into effect. At around that time, in the fall of 1862, this wealthy railroad magnet from Milton, Mass., John Murray Forbes, came up with the idea of publicizing this act that he saw, as many other abolitionists did at the time, of being fundamentally important. And he came up with the idea of publishing a small version separately of the Emancipation Proclamation. And he wanted to publish, he said, a million copies of it to distribute to Union troops, to take, when they were in the field in the South, they could move from plantation to plantation, behind Confederate lines, in front of Confederate lines, or as Confederate lines advanced. They would distribute these to the African-American population there, the, the, the now liberated slaves there, so that they had a copy of the Emancipation Proclamation of their own. And it was printed deliberately to be very small so that it could be carried in large numbers by soldiers. And his idea was to, to use the U.S. military to distribute these to the slaves behind the lines. Our copy of the Emancipation Proclamation has a particular history of its own. It was sent from Forbes, probably, to Senator Samuel Arnold of Rhode Island, who no one would ever remember. He apparently kept it in its little envelope, filed it away, and may never have looked at it again because our copy is absolutely pristine. It's almost as clean and tight and bright as the day it was printed. For us, the Emancipation Proclamation represents quite a number of things. First, it is tied with African American history, and we have very deep and important resources for African American history. Secondly, it's tied to liberation, you know, a sense of activism in the case of an abolitionist like John Forbes, but it's also really active liberation on the part of the enslaved people in the South, liberating themselves from oppression. And this is a tool in which abolitionists sought to encourage self-liberation, and that to us is important. It's important from an intellectual perspective. This is an important piece of the development of governance in the United States, of thinking about who is a citizen, who has a right to be a citizen. It's also important because it's tied to Du Bois, the man after whom the, the library is named, the man after whom uh, our collections are really formed in, in an intellectual sense. Du Bois wrote a great pageant for the 50th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation in 1913, the Star of Ethiopia, in which he foregrounded African culture, African history, African ideas and music to serve as a, a point of liberation, if you want to call it cultural liberation, intellectual liberation for African peoples in the United States. So it is not directly tied to Du Bois, 
But Du Bois saw the Emancipation Proclamation the same way that it had been described, in the same way that we see the Emancipation Proclamation as an important piece of U.S. history in which we see activism, self-activism, self-actualization coming together, self-liberation being promoted.